We will now light the Advent wreath. Together we light the fourth candle of the Advent wreath. This is the candle of love. O oh God, stir up your power of love, we pray, and come, and with great might to help us that with the help of your grace and your merciful forgiveness may hasten what our sins impede. As we light this fourth, advent, fourth candle of the Advent wreath, we are reminded of your love and forgiveness. May this candle help us relax, know you are God, and be able to see your love around us and within us every day. Amen. Please turn to page 75 in your book of Common Prayer. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway of our God. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Please turn to page 79 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 79, our confession of sin. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and power. Together, at the bottom of page 79, let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Together, in the middle of page 80, Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Please turn to page 82 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 92, and together, 82, and together we will recite the 95th Psalm. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving 
and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God above all gods. In his hands are the coverings of the earth, <coughs> hills, hills, or us. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry ground. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, <coughs> our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Please be seated for the readings. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made us the decision of our neighbors. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us light that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. Again the Lord spoke to Isaac, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord, your God, let it be deep and as shoal, or high as heaven. But as I said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, it is too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is the, with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and, cho and choice the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choice the good, the land before whom two kings who you are in dead will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, revealed to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be son of God, with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring the obedience of faith among all Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourself, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be his saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Please stand. In a slight variation from what is printed in the bulletin, we are going to stand and sing hymn 65, Prepare the Way O Zion, all three verses, one run. Thank you.
Please be seated. A reading from Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord throughout, through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Je Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. The word of the Lord. I always have to start my homilies with a thank you to the Handy Sermons That Work page on the Episcopal website, and my thanks to Father Dean Johnson for his good thoughts and inspiration. What we've heard this morning was a daring plan. For ages, God had tried to get the attention of his people. Through prophets, poets, and priests, God had tried to get the attention of the people that he loved. God had yelled, God had whispered, God stayed silent, God shouted, but people were deaf to God's call. God appeared in dreams, God appeared in burning bushes, God spoke through pillars of fire, and God made manna fall from the heaven provided water in the wilderness and lands that flowed with milk and honey, and still the people wouldn't listen. It was a language barrier, God thought. They can't hear me. So God spoke louder and bolder. Fiery prophets and judges and kings spoke with God's voice. They tried their best to call the people back to the love buried deep inside but words fell on deaf ears. We thought we were self-made, and so we ignored the messengers and the message. God, in turn, hatched a daring plan. Instead of poets and prophets, instead of manna and messengers, instead of fires and floods, God would become flesh and blood. The creator of the world the one who called the cosmos into being with a word, that great I am would take human flesh. But how? Through a baby. Not the baby of a powerful queen, not the baby of a savvy politician, but a helpless baby born in a little backwater town. God was going to become a nobody. I will be Emmanuel, God with us, to show them the face of love. When this baby was born, all those ages of loving and longing and hoping came together in this one seemingly insignificant moment. At last, God was speaking our language. In Jesus, we are reminded that throughout the lives of our ancestors, throughout our lives, and even in those lives of those yet to come, God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. God is with us through the struggle and the storm. God is with us in tremblings, stumblings, shortcomings, in triumphs and our thanksgiving, in the midst of the messiness of our lives and the days we seem to hold, barely hold it together. God is with us. God will be with us as we travel into the unknown. 
as we venture on deeper water and uncharted paths. God will be with us in the silence and in the shouts, in our liberation and in our longing. In Jesus, God was, God is, and God will always be with us, always. The birth of Jesus is not an event in time that took place millennia ago. The birth of Jesus happens again and again and again each day in our world if we stop long enough to recognize that God is with us. God coming into our world will always be wondrous, always be frightening, because it means that any of us can be held in the presence of God made flesh. Amen. Please stand and join me in reading, reciting the Apostles' Creed found on page 96 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 96, Book of Common Prayer, the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue on page 97. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. As we continue, show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Together, let us continue to pray. Bottom of page 98, a colic for Sundays. Together. O oh God, you have made us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue to pray together on page, the bottom of page 99, a colic for peace together. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your holy servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, truly trusting in your defense, may not fear the sweat of any adversity. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The leader and the people pray responsively. Father, we, pr we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. 
Presbyter's Word and Sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. There may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works might find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light perpetual shine upon them. We praise for you, your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. Dear God, awaken us that we may be ready when your dear son comes, that we may, that we may receive him with joy and serve with pure hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We continue now on page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. Our prayer of general thanksgiving, 101, we will pray together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. May we give... We may walk with our faith, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to do a tricky offertory plate switch. But first of all, I want to thank Emily coming today because this will all be worth it in one moment. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. This is the Wexford Carol arranged by Dorothea Baker. Good people of this Christmas time, consider well and bear in mind what our good God for us has done in sending his beloved Son with Mary. Christmas Day in Bethlehem upon that morn there was a blessed Messiah born near Bethlehem did shepherds kill and feeding sheep to whom God's angels did appear which put the shepherds in great fear arise and go the angels said to Bethlehem be not afraid for there you'll find this happy Sweet Jesus born with thankful heart and joyful mind, the shepherds went that babe to 
find and as God's angel had foretold he did receive your Christ behold within a manger he was laid and by his side the virgin made as long Please be seated one more time. I want to thank Jason Russell, Emily Black, Olive Heidegg, and Emmett Moorhead for being with us this morning. Also to Elise, who is kind of the crucifer under threat of something. She did a great job. Uh, one last thanks goes to Amy Thompson for just being here. <sighs> she says she hears me preach 24-7, so she's doing double duty today. And I would be someone who doesn't have eyes if I did not say that there is a child in a gold suit in our presence today. So thank you, Felix, for being Felix. Thank you. Love that suit. Um, one quick reminder, we will be delivering our gifts to PCM's Fresh Start on Friday afternoon. Um, any gifts that you have purchased need to be in the office by noon on Friday. Anyone who has a big vehicle is welcome to join us as we transport the presents. Please see me for details. The altar flowers are given by Fran and John Krause in the memory of Dr. Robin Howe and in memory of Mary Reddy Taylor. Finally, and lastly, the schedule for our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services can be found in your bulletins. Thank you. We will conclude our service with the prayer of St. Christotham, which can be found on page 102 of your morning of your Book of Common Prayer, page morning 102. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And we promise that through your well beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, our desires and petitions as they may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Please stand. Let us bless the Lord. Our recessional hymn is hymn number 66. Come thou long expected Jesus.
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.